Okay, fam, so I thought long and hard about whether I should make this video or not because of the ultimate title I've devised, which I may or may not change, being the one thing that holds Fairy Tale back from being a masterpiece. I feel like I'm managing to trigger every facet of anime fan. I'm taking shots at the hardcore fairy tale haters and the hardcore fairy tailers. But since I think I'm actually right in my thesis and this is a video I wanted to make for a while, I decided to go for it. Also, random fact, the nuxlation of I thought long and hard whether I wanted to make this video or not is actually Actually, more like, I just kind of wanted to make this video, and if you don't like it, lump it, digest it, and lump it. But in a nicer way, of course. I'm so lucky that I have the objectively greatest fan base on all of AniTube that was subjected to so much quotation mark honesty, they're basically immune to getting triggered. Or at least, that's what I've convinced myself. So, with the power of friendship in mind, and the Dragon Force OST cranked to max, let's discuss the one principle of Fairy Tales narrative that goes against its core theme, and through that, changes the subconscious perspective of every viewer. Here's my analysis of the one mistake Fairy Tale made that kept it from being universally regarded as greatness. Disclaimer! I do not dislike Natsu. Spoiler! This video will be discussing the contradiction between the theme of Natsu as the protagonist and the themes of Fairy Tale as the series. In my latest video discussing the appeal of Fairy Tale, I focused on how it does an incredible job writing its hype moments, but I figured I had to make this a bit of a mini-series, defending the appeal of Fairy Tale because it's a series I genuinely love, despite the vast amounts of shortcomings it possesses. Last time was the superficial and satisfying epiphanies, and this time it's the core themes, primarily the appeal of the fairy tale deal. I realize that a ton of jokes get floated around about how fairy tales just discount One Piece, where the fairy tale guild is the discount straw hat pirates, and I take absolutely no responsibility for any of that, despite the fact that I made some of those jokes myself in the past. But the theme of the Fairy Tale Guild is so different than the theme of the Straw Hat Pirates, anywhere deeper than the surface level, familial aspects included. So despite the fact that I want to do a video about family in shonen anime discussing the various themes and differences between Fairy Tale, the Straw Hats, the Lee Village, Black Bulls, Class 1A, etc., that'll be more like a documentary than this video. But of course, the difference should be in everyone's mind when comparing the Straw Hats to the Fairy Tale Guild is that the Straw Hats are thematically set up to retain its elite core members. Every member of the crew has a distinct position and purpose. Luffy's the captain, Zoro's the first mate, Sanji's the chef, Chopper's the doctor, Nami's the navigator, Frankie's the shipwright, Usopp's the liar, oh, I mean the sniper, Robin's the archaeologist, Brooke's the musician. And for this reason, I don't believe Carrot will join the crew. She doesn't have a distinct purpose. And that's why I do think Jinbei will join the crew, because the Straw Hats need a helmsman. Jinbei is a dope helmsman. He proved that when he steered the ship in the whole cake arc, and that was dope. Now, Fairy Tale, by thematic definition, has no restrictions whatsoever. If your heart aligns with Fairy Tale, they'll welcome you with open arms. Every viewer can join Fairy Tale. Now, I don't want to get into a full comparison between the two because that's not what this video is supposed to be. And while Luffy did let Vivi join the crew in One Piece, even though she couldn't because of plot shiz, it's not that Luffy's heart isn't letting members join. The theme of the series and the theme of what makes a Straw Hat, as well as their importance in the crew, is something entirely different in the story of One Piece compared to Fairy Tail. The Straw Hats are all about their family venturing forward and making an impact on the world, while for the most part, the key arcs of Fairy Tail are where Fairy Tail is trying to either maintain or reclaim their rightful foothold in the world, like we see in the Grand Magic games, or how they're not on the offensive whatsoever during the Phantom Lord arc, the Tenro Island arc, the Edelus arc, the Thunder Palace arc, the Tower of Heaven arc, or even the Tartaros arc, to be honest, they are a much more reactive group than the proactive Straw Hats. And for the same reason, thematically, that's why they're a larger, more welcoming group, because despite the fact that they're also a wacky family, they're a familial wacky home, not a familial wacky adventure. It's not to say that either of the two is better, I'm just trying to point out the vast thematic differences between them. Because there's another important point in this exact regard that I believe to be crucial here. Because of the role each Straw Hat plays in their crew, it makes sense that Luffy is the guy who's the captain. He's the main character strongest member. It works out that Luffy beats the main bad guy at the end of every arc, and Zoro beats the second the main bad guy in the arc. That's great, that's how it should be. Realize I'm generalizing here because I am also reading Wano, but in Fairy Tale, where there are no defined roles, and not only that, but they mention countless times throughout the series that Natsu is not the strongest member, it's almost like every theme in the series points to the Fairy Tale Guild as being the main character of the show. Which is why when the Guild was finally reestablished in one of the latest episodes, I almost felt tears welling up in my face. 
but at the same time, their actions vastly contradict this, with Natsu clearly as the story's main character. And it's these opposing themes exactly that destroyed Fairy Tale for so many people. I mean, if Natsu was a quasi-main character, and the lead dude in the final arc because of the whole Zerif end thing, that's cool. I actually like Natsu. He's no top-tier shonen protagonist in my book, but I like him a lot more than many others. But imagine a series focused on the fairy tale guild as being the main character. Relatability, check. Quirkiness, check. This way an ass pull would not be required at the end of every single arc for Natsu to somehow take the W, but still remain weaker than Urza after taking that W. Natsu versus Jalal, after all his stronger teammates just lost. Oh, don't worry. I'll eat this ether nano stuff to become wickedly OP for like 30 seconds so I can wipe out my opponent. For my friends, of course. Natsu versus Zero, after all his stronger teammates just lost. Oh, I'll just eat this gold flame thing that we'll never ever see again to become wickedly OP for like 30 seconds so I can wipe out my opponent for my friends of course. Natsu versus Hades after all his stronger teammates just lost. Oh I'll just eat this lightning dragon stuff to become wickedly OP for like 30 seconds so I can wipe out my opponent for my friends of course. This is exactly the detail that bothers so many people in regard to the series. Where in all honestly, my legit favorite moments in the series are when the guild is slice of life putzing around. One of the things so many people hate about Shonen altogether is predictability. You're gonna have your main character kick the main bad guy at the end of the arc, even though he's seemingly way weaker, cause in worst case, power of friendship can step in and save the day. And nothing is a bigger aggressor of this than Fairy Tale. Now, imagine if the themes actually aligned. Imagine if the Fairy Tale guild as a whole was the main guy. Character. Yes, you'd have different arcs focusing on different individuals, and you'd have different individuals taking the W's at the end of the arcs. That way, the theme of the fairy tale guild being the main character remains intact, and the predictability disappears because, despite, yes, the main character being the fairy tale guild taking the W at the end of the arc from a seemingly way stronger opponent, the predictability becomes so much less linear when you don't know what angle it's gonna come from. It may be teamwork that takes down the main bad guy. There's another issue in a lot of shonen, aside from Black Clover, which actually does a fantastic job with this, almost every arc ends up as a one-on-one. -on -one. Main character versus main bad guy. Main character just barely manages to win. Hurrah! And I understand there's many reasons why we would want this to happen, to show the main character's growth, etc. But in a show where the fairy tale guild is the main character and where the final battle of the arc can actually be Urza and Loxus teaming up against the opponent after Freed set up some traps. That would be freaking awesomeness and would honestly help the power scaling a great deal too. Now imagine what it would be like to actually have an arc where the guild could rightfully be considered the main character, where many guild members can shine. Hmm. Oh yeah. Don't I keep saying that the Grand Magic Games arc is my favorite arc in fairy tale. Elfman versus Drunk Dude. Urza versus 100 Monsters. Kana getting a score of 9,999 in the Monotest Laser thing. That was amazing. Because of Fairy Glitter. Bloxus versus Raventail. Gajil versus Rogue, Gray versus Memory Magic Doucheface, Mira Jane Literal Cannon Fan Service Competition. Yes, you heard that correctly. Thank you, Fairy Tale, you shameless mastermind. And now, since almost every, even slightly important character in Fairy Tale had a big moment, where the entire goal of the arc was the Fairy Tale Guild that was being spat on for years, finally reclaims its place as Top Dog Guild in Fiore. Yes, the theme of the Fairy Tale Grand Magic Games was that the Fairy Tale Guild is the main character. Finally! And no, it's not overly serious. It's the least serious arc in the entire series. Then we have Natsu versus the Twin Dragons as a climax, and not even as a climax to the tournament arc. No, it wasn't even the finale of the tournament arc. That was a five on five epic showdown, but it was a climax in my pants. Oh my God, I love this arc. Oh man, I have to do a full analysis on this arc. But in any case, to come full circle, my last defending fairy tale video was on how they mastered hype scenes and link to that is in the description. So I guess let this show how two of fairy tales high points really go hand in hand beautifully. The brilliant hype moments and the greatness of the fairy tale guild itself. I don't know exactly what I will be titling this video because what I have in mind is a bit long, but the one thing that holds fairy tale back from being a masterpiece is not the power of friendship, and it's not Natsu altogether. It's the fact that Fairy Tale was a bit too worried to step out of its comfort zone as a shonen without a defined main character to take all the wins via friendship boosts, because he wouldn't be strong enough without those friendship boosts. 
and if he'd just be strong enough, then he'd be too OP. There's a lot of good in Fairy Tale, and it saddens me that a lot of it goes unnoticed and unappreciated. Speaking of, I'm very appreciative that you took your time to watch this video, whether you agree with it or not. I'm curious to hear your opinion in the comments, and I hope that I wasn't too ambitious making a video that's insulting the hardcore fans and the hardcore haters. But in my honest opinion on the matter, and this is honest without quotation marks, Fairy Tale is almost brilliant. So if you can glance past the rough patches, I think almost anyone would really enjoy it. I know I did. Yeah, most Ark Final Battles were not exactly my cup of tea for the reasons I've stated. Yes, I think the series would do better, putting Natsu in a bit more of a backseat, not as the quote-unquote main character, and letting the Fairy Tale Guild itself shine more. But I do look forward every week to the new episode of Fairy Tale to see what new ridiculous happenings are taking place in my guild. Weebs and Weebets, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed. Leave a like if you did, and feel free to subscribe for future anime analysis or satire. I'd actually really like to hear your thoughts in the comments. I thought this video had a rather interesting premise that I didn't really see anyone else take up before. As I mentioned, link is in the description to my last fairy tale video, link to my Twitter, link to my merch, and link to my Patreon, where I would really appreciate every single pledge. Everyone who does pledge is invited to the Discord server, and speaking of Patreon, I especially wanted to thank the patrons King Beat My Meat, Sage of Snake, Pop Up, Grumpy Welshman, Lazy Ronin, Girthy Worm Jin, Fernando Costa, Allison Stricker, JD Finchery, Laser, Sash, Ethan Price, King Tank Games, Prisky Dingo, Soy Boy Theories, MDQ, Colton Scott, Praise Lord Dugirugameshu, Billy Thompson, Mitochondria, Salf Says, Gremin, Sergeant Malarkey, Alan Weavers, Crazy Beat, Divine Reigns, Miku, TM Philly, The Lord Tweegerank, Anthony Booth, Steelers, Larry Blab, Cream My Pancake, Emir Zekik, Rari, Necro, Zindergarten, Cortland Ewing, Emperor Misha, and Kyle the Warrior. Also thanks to the God Usopp rank, Tyler Schumacher, Dark Element, M. Hartman, Sunny Parks, James Patterson, and Maurice Luis Dreyfus. Thank you all so much for pledging, and thank you all to everyone who watched this video until this point. I hope you did enjoy my take on it, whether you are a fan of fairy tale, hate fairy tale, or are somewhere in between, even though most people are not somehow somewhere in between. But but then again, you're the fan base. I put nothing past you guys. I don't know if I still need to tell you this, because pretty much mastered the art. But remember, stay weird, fam. <laughs>